Praise God, hallelujah. This is another day, a new day. We thank God for the day. We thank God for the service. We thank God for, for, for you coming to listen what God has for us today. I'm very glad to stand before you to present the word of God to you. And I know it's going to be a blessing. You are going to be blessed by God through his word. My name is Bishop Moswafula. I'm glad to be standing and sharing the word of God before you guys. And I'm very happy. And I say you are most welcome to our service. God is so good. All the time God is good. And God cares most for us. And God is lovely to his people. So today we are going to talk about... Uh, about the house we are going to talk about the house and what does it mean in the word of god we are going to read the word of god in the book of mark the gospel of mark chapter 13 from verse 34 and that five Mark chapter 13, verse 34 and 35, the Bible say, it's, it's like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants. And each workers, each, each, and each his worker and commanded the commanded the, the doorkeeper to watch. Watch therefore, for you do not know when he when the master of the house is coming in the evening at midnight at the growing growing of the roster or in the morning. The Bible tells us about the house. We are talking about the house. The Bible say this house is like the owner of the house. Every house has the owner. Every house, it may have more people, but we have the owner of the house. He may have children, he may have uh, servants, but it's the owner. So the Bible says, this house we are talking about today is the house which the owner is a master of the house. And the owner has a servant in this house. But the owner has gone away. He plans to go in a far country. And he leave his servants with authority and what they're supposed to do in his house. And he command all the workers. And he say to the keeper of the door or the keeper of the care to watch, to watch carefully. We can call those uh, security people. Some other places they call them watchmen. Their work is to watch is to watch the compound, is to watch who comes, to watch the area, to keep safe the compound of the home. So the Lord God is saying, you need to watch and watch very carefully because you don't know exactly time your master will come back. We don't know this master will come back in the evening time or the master will come back in the in the midnight or in the time the crowing of or early morning of the crowing of the roster or this master will come in the morning we don't know exactly what does it mean to us believers the house is you the house is the church and what's the church is us 
You personally, you are the church. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the master, who is the master? It's Jesus. Who who would come and build the house? And he went in a far country for his own business to make a place for us. And he said he will come back, but we don't know when, what time. That's why we need to watch. We need to be alert. We need to do things he told us to do because whenever he comes back, he wants to see exactly what he told us we are doing the same. And in the house, you know, we have a house uh, who, who take care of the house inside. Maybe in the house we have people who work outside in the yard. They make the yard clean. They, 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 they take care of the flowers. They make the beauty of the home. And there are people working in the house. Everybody knows his job. And we have the, the, the security people who watch for the house. To make sure that the enemy cannot come in any other way to steal anything in this house. And they watch. While they are watching for the master, the time he will come, they need to open the gate for him. He, they need to be alert so that when he comes, he need to get them ready for him. That's, that is talking about you and me. We need to be alert for this time. Because we don't know exactly the time our master will come back. We don't know when Jesus is coming to knock on the door. He say, hey guys, I'm here. Oh, it's when we wake up. It's when we try to see where is the trace. It's when we try to see what to do to welcome him. He will be not good for us. The Bible is saying we need to watch and we need to be ready for him. We need to watch every day because we don't know exactly how the master will come back. And it will be good when he come back, he kept everything in the place. It will be good when Jesus come back, he will keep us ready. It will be good for when he comes, he get you. You are ready to trust, ready to receive him. It is Typical when somebody tell you I'm coming, but he don't know, he don't tell you the hour. I think all of us we have been in that situation. You are waiting a fester who told you I'm coming, and you may think he will come in the morning. You wake up early in the morning. You start preparing the house. You sweep the house. You make you clean the dishes. You clean everywhere. You are ready, expecting your guest. You see the morning is passing. You, you think you will, the, the face will show up at, 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 at lunchtime. You start preparing lunch. You are setting up everything. You are ready to receive your case. You see the time of lunch is passing by. You start wondering. You, now time to, we get the phone. We start calling. We say, are you coming? Seriously? Or you have changed your mind? Say, no, I'm coming. You, you see the time of dinner, you forget about breakfast, you forget about lunch, you start preparing for the dinner, you make the dinner ready, everything's ready, you, 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 you wait, you wait, you see the time of dinner is passing by. You may be frustrated, you may be upset, but when you call, he say, I'm coming. He am not to say I'm not coming. But what he, he means to tell you is the time he will come. So you will be doing all these things to prepare, to make things ready. You cannot just sit until you wait, until the cars come, they get the house not clean, the things, the chairs not in order, you don't have crochets or food to feed them. You, you are ready for your case to come. This is what Jesus is talking about us as a church. He say, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when I go to, play, to, play, to prepare a place for you, I will come back in John 14. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when I go in my father's house, there's so many mansions, there's so many places, there's so many rooms for you. 
And when I come back, I'll come back to take you there. But he didn't tell us exactly time he would come back. The owner of the house, who is the master of the house, he's going for a far country, to the place where we, we are just expecting for his coming back. I know the church is thinking the Lord is coming back, but we may be tired fall and fall asleep. And in the midnight, you hear the door, someone knocking on the, the bell of the door ringing, says somebody is in the door. And if you are expecting someone to come, you are not wondering who is ringing the bell of the door. You will just know my guest. You, you just know that the master is coming. So that's how we need to prepare ourselves. And the house is, is so many things in the house. In the house, there's some things you, you love most. In the house, there's some things with the value. We shall go to see that sometimes. But this today, I want just you to see the point that the master is coming back. Today, I want you to see the point that we don't need to have more sleep. You cannot go deep asleep if you are expecting somebody to come in your home. You cannot just sleep as normal. You will be sleeping, but your own eyes are awake. You are just thinking any time he will show up. And you cannot go to bed earlier. You will wait and, and some time. So the Bible says, watch. Why we need to watch? We need to watch because he's coming back. And he's coming back. He wants to get us ready. He wants to get us while we are well prepared. He wants to get us why we have done the things they have told us to, to do. You remember in the Matthew chapter 28, Jesus, before he left to go in heaven, that's what he's saying here in Mark. He, he gave us authority, power, and the work to do. He said, go all over the world, make disciples, heal the sick, preach the gospel, prepare people for my coming. He has given us the job to do. So we need to watch. Among us, when somebody are working for the pulpit, other people that are doing cleaning, other people that are doing yard uh, cleaning, they are working for the flowers, they are making arrangements so for some special, the master to come back. We need to be ready. This is the time. We are living in a time that the Lord can appear any moment. We are living in the time that we need to be ready. We need to be ready in every way. That the, when he comes, we are ready to receive him. He said, you don't know the time. Because certainly in verse 26, he says, he will come to you just suddenly. You don't know. And he find you, you are sleeping. It will be not good when you are master, you come and get people sleeping. And we see this. It happens before. To be a lesson to us. When Jesus was going farther in prayer, he had the disciples who he was depending to. He was believing that they would watch because the time was not good for them. The time was bad. Something's going to happen. He told them, just watch some hours with me. But when he went further to pray, he come back there asleep. So the church, we need to watch, we need to be attentive. We need to be all well we keep, we keep, we keep by the word of God because we don't know the time the master will come back. When Jesus came back and get these 12 us sleeping, he went to them up and said, guys, you need to be awake. Today is not the day of sleeping. Today is the day we need to equip ourselves fully in the spiritual. We are going to deal with something difficult, but we are the winners. So the Bible is telling us as a church to be awakened, to be alert, to be in a good position, to understand that ending is coming. We understand that the master is coming back. We need to be aware that the Lord is coming back. We may do other things, but the important is 
the time the Lord will come back. Are you awake? That's the question. The house is well prepared. And when I talk the house, I'm talking about you. You are the house the Lord prepared. You are the house the Lord set up. When he have given your house, you need to check yourself that if master comes today, my house is in order. You know, most of the time our houses are not, are not in order. Most of the time our houses are not clean. Most of the time, we, we can wake up and go to work forgetting that we need to clean the house. Sometimes you say, ah, I don't care, I'm clean when I come back. But what happens when you come back and get the case in the door? It will be a shame some things they will see which you don't want them to see. So we need to be alert, we need to be well prepared. We need to check everything. We need to see that we are ready for the master to come. We are ready for this Jesus. Because if we want to receive him, he's looking. Really, my people are ready for me? Really, they want me to come back? Or some of us, we say, ah, let Jesus wait. Because of what we are saying, Jesus, to wait? Because we are not ready. Your house is not clean enough. Your house is not well prepared. Your house is, has a lot of junks. You need to throw some things out of the house. Some people accumulated a lot of things, which is not necessary, which is not must to keep it. It's just like a chunk. You, you cannot get a place to move. And those things are not valuable. Take it, those things out. Put your house in order. Praise the name of Jesus. So that when you move, you can see everything in your house. Because the house is in order. The things you don't need it, you take, take it away. All things, get it away. Make your house in order. Bring new things. I'm talking about you. You are the house. Some things which you, you have kept for a long time, and it's worn, it has no value. Why are you continue keeping such a kind of things? Let it go. Take it out. Trash it. I let you be afresh. Go and bring new things, new mind, new things, new thought in your life. And make your life be ready for the Lord. When he comes back, he will get you have set things in order. Because we, when he comes back, we don't have time to, to take things out. We have enough time right now to clean the house. We have the right time right, right now to clean our yard. We have the time right now to watch. Praise the name of Jesus. It has seen in the book of um, Romans chapter 13. You need to know that I'm talking about the house. And this is the house. You are the house of the Lord. You are the house of God. You are the house of the Holy Spirit. So the house we are being seeing in this house, there's a table the Father has set. And you hear the voice of the Father calling, welcome to the table. There's a prayer for you. There's a place for you. There's a seat for you. There's no condemnation in this table. And there's no Nobody will accuse you in this table because when the master will come, he will set the table before us. I say you are most welcome, my servants. I know you are passing a lot of challenges. I know you are being sleepless. You didn't sleep well, but I'm here. Everything's all right. Everything's okay. As soon as the master appears, things are fine. Praise the name of Jesus. So we need to be ready. We need to be ready for him. In first, in chapter 13, first, Romans chapter 13, verse 11 and 12, the Bible is just telling us things which is looking for the time. And the Bible says, and to this, knowing the, the time, 
that now it is higher time to awake out of sleep for now our salvation is near then when we first believe believed the night is far spent the day is at hand therefore let us cast off the works of the darkness and let us put on the armor of light the bible is telling us about what is happening in our time this is the time this is the time that we need to know that this is the time and this is a higher time we need to be awake have you been spending one day without sleep and why are you not sleeping you have a thought you have a mind of something and you're thinking about it maybe you're thinking about how you are going to get money and you miss a sleep because you are thinking about money and you say tomorrow i need to get some money and you thinking about it you thinking about it or you have something you have money already you get the money in the bank the which you didn't expect a good amount of money you're excited and if you miss a sleep because you are excited because you are planning more about your money you receive so there's something making you to be awake there's something make you to not sleep you are not sick you need to imagine you are not sick i'm not saying you may be awake struggling with some things no you are just awake because you are excited because you are expecting something. Because you are expecting the loved ones. They say, I will come tomorrow. So you are thinking the dress you are going to wear. You are thinking how you can make the house to look like him to like. You are thinking how you can make your hair. You, how you can wash your shoes. You are thinking which, which food I will cook for him. You are thinking a lot because you are the best man you are thinking about is coming tomorrow. You are you are you you are the person you are being engaged in love. You have said I'm coming tomorrow. I'm coming to feast you. It he, he will make you or she will make you a sleepless night. You are thinking about it, how the day will look when he, she, she will reach here. How the day will look like when, when, when he reaches here. You are thinking about this something which is excitement. This moment I'm talking is not a sad moment. It's not that we are struggling with some things so that we cannot sleep. No, the Bible is telling us we are just not being awake because of what? Because the master is coming back. We are not being awake because of the struggle. We are not being awake because we miss some things. We are just being awake for expecting. Highly expectation. And this is the time. And this is the hour we need to be awake. The sleep has gone. And the day have been near at hand. Which means the things of the darkness no longer in our life because the dark is gone. We are expecting to see the day, a beauty day, a day. You will just imagine if you have done wedding, the day you are going to marry. You think a lot. Some people don't sleep. They are thinking about how the day will be. You have a lot of expectation in your day. You have a lot of, of thinking about it. It makes you not sleep. It's not that you are struggling with any. We have been arranging a wedding. You have done everything. Everything is okay. You have gone to the room where the wedding will be. Uh, you have decorated the house and do everything. You have account of the wedding. You have food ready. We have everything. But you will miss the sleep. You will be with a sleepless night. And when you see the morning is coming, the joy increase more. Because of the day, because of what you are going to go into, because of the agreement you are going. And you will feel good when everything is done, when you hear everybody say, I do. So when you say, 
Thank you, Lord. It's done. And it will be good when we see the master is there. And he will say, welcome to the table. There's food for you. Well done for the job you have done. We shall say, thank you. <laughs> we love this moment. This is a joyful moment. I'm talking to something that can make you be excited. But I want you to check your house. I want you to check the things in the house. I want you to take again double checking. Sometimes we leave the house and we come back, we get we, we forget the light, like our oh, prison life, forget the light. Going to work. We need to double check. Check your life. It's up to you to check your house. Really, everything is in order. Really, are you ready for this man, Jesus Christ? Really, if he appears today, are you able to stand before him? Or you are there the person who delay to hiding to make things right? Are you the person who run to the corner? Are you the person who close the door for one hour to make the room clear? Are you the person who, who will say, Lord, hold on, wait a minute, I'm, I'm coming, I'm making things right? We have a plenty of time to make things right in our life. And it's the moment we need to make everything right. Check yourself. Check your house. Check every room in your house. Have you given Jesus every room in your house? Or you have given Jesus just a small room? And you occupy all the rooms? Check the, the, the every room. Jesus is there. I have surrendered the, the rooms to Jesus. Or we have given just a piece of the room. It's up to you. You know your life. You know yourself than, better than anybody else. And God himself know you better than you know yourself. So you need to check your room. You need to check your house. It's your house. You have freedom to go everywhere in your house, to touch everywhere in your house, to do things in the house. That's your house. You need to check it. But there's a master on your house. This master called Jesus Christ is a master of that house. But you are sovereign in that house. You have power in that house. You have authority in that house. You can walk in that house. You can put things in that house. You can check things in that house. It's your work to do the checking. It's the work of you to do the, to make sure everything's right. And you need to watch. Because you don't know the day he will come. You don't know the hour he will show up. But he's coming. That's a promise. And he has never changed his mind. And he will never change his mind. He, he will never say, I will, not, I will not come. He's coming. Nothing will make Jesus to change his mind. To say he's not coming to get us. No way. Whether we like or not, whether we are ready or not, the Bible says he's coming back. It's his, 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 his power to come his home. So nobody will stop you to come in your home. Your home, you can come any time, any hour you like to come. That's what the Bible is telling us here. You come any time. So if the servant of the house, they don't want you to come, the church is not ready for Jesus. I tell you, he will show up. He will get us the way we are. So we need to know because he has already told us we need to be aware. We need to be awake. The church needs to arise up. People need to be set in their mind to check themselves. The things they have been doing in the darkness, the darkness is over. You know, many people have done so many things in the dark. But the dark is going. When you will start seeing the sun in the morning, these people who do things in the dark, they look the place to hide. They don't want people to see them while they have been doing the dark. Because the dark is gone. They, they are welcome in the morning. Everybody wants to be right in the morning. Everyone wants to be upright in the morning. 
Everyone want to wash the face in the morning to make sure that the sleep is gone. They check themselves in the mirror before they leave the house. Are you doing that? You go in the mirror, you check yourself. Why are you going to the mirror with yourself? Because of the sleep. Something been wrong in your eyes. Something can be wrong in your nose. Something can be wrong in your mouth. Because of the sleep. So when you wake up, you wash your face, you check in the mirror before you leave the house. Why? You don't want people to correct your face, to correct your mouth, to correct your nose when you're out there. To correct how you dress when you're out there. To cor correct your hair when you're out there. You know, some people when they're out there, those who don't care, people see like, did, 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 did you come from home? Your answer would be yes, but the, the appearance say no. When people see you, how you look, you didn't come from home. Because you didn't wash your face. You didn't check yourself in the mirror. You didn't, you, didn't, you didn't do the things, normal things you are supposed to do so that you can walk out from the house. And when people see, they know you, ha, that you, you are not at home. Because someone who have come from his home, he knows, you can just see and know this person is coming from his home. He take care of himself before he walk out. That's what the Bible is telling us today here. You need to check yourself properly in, the, in this time. This is the time that the, we need to be awake. We need to be sober. We need to think. And we need to be ready for the Lord. I don't know if you are, but I'm ready for him. So you need to be ready for Jesus. When he show up, instead of us being like a shock, instead of us being like a surprise, we need to be ready and jumping up and hacking him and say, welcome master, welcome. We have been waiting. I've been waiting for you. I'm ready for you. And he say, yes, I'm going to set the table for you. Thank you. Welcome. At the table. Come and enjoy the blessings and the rewards for your good job. It will be a blessing. So it's uh, some exciting moment. It's the moment we are thinking about it. It's the moment every believer is looking for. It's the moment we have done, uh, we can done a lot, but all what we are doing, we are doing for the last day. How this last day is going to be? How this last day is going to look like? How this last day is going to appear? How? That's, that's, that's the, the thing is in our mind. When we are doing what we are doing, we are focusing for the last day. We can do many things right now. We can go around right now. We can, we can, we, we can, Think other things right now, but the main thing we need to have in mind that there's a day the master's coming back. And he have given us opportunity, he have given us responsibility, he have given us a mandate the work to be done. He want, he, when he comes, he knows what he told us. He's going to check the area. It's going to, if he give you to work for the yard, he will just stand outside and look for his yard and say, well done, you have done a good job. But if he get the grass is dead and the flowers are dead and everything is looking, is dead, he, you are not good suffer. The master will not be pleased with you. And he get the houses a lot of times to say, where are the housekeepers? Where are the suffering in this house? I didn't leave my house like this and see all these chunks. The master will be angry with us because he don't want us to do things unorderly. He wants to, us to do according his order, what he left us to do. So please let us focus, let us see what God told us in his word to do. That's what is coming to check. That's what is coming to look. He would just stand and say, oh, everything's all right. Say, well, well done. Thank you so much for your good job. 
And that's what every servant expects to hear from his master. You'll be happy when you hear your master say, this time you have done a good job. It is a glad moment. But if the master all the time he appears, he sees you have done something wrong. You have done the complaining, fast with you, complaining, fast with you. That's not good. That's not good. When you see him, you say, now what is going to fuss about? And when he see you, he see what I'm going to fuss about. This serpent is not good. God call us and he give his son Jesus Christ to set the work for us. To set some work. A special work to do. And we are just servants for in this house. And we are working for this house. To manage. And God didn't give us the house which is complicated. God give us what I'm talking is. God give you the house you can manage. In the back of your house, there's no more work. And we don't worry about the backyard. We worry about the front yard. That's why the eyes is looking. So God put everything in the front. So it's not hard work. You cannot say, I didn't see what was in my back here. I didn't see that. It, it's not you, you to worry about it. You just worry about the fronts because those are things you manage. The things you can see. The things you can smell. The things you can talk about. It. You can see everything is in front of you. So you can manage the things which is in front of you. If they, the boss put the things in the temple in front of you, you is easily to manage things which you can see. But the things which you cannot see is not for you. It's for him to take care. But you just take care for the things you see because that's the things he will ask you about it. So God bless you. It's a very nice time. I think this one has blessed you while we are going on to check our house and we put the house in order. If it's not in order, it's an exciting moment. It's a blessed one. And I know you are blessed and I'm blessed too. So I want to say thank you for coming and God bless you as we